everywhere. Today you will hear a word from heaven that will change the course of your life. I'm believing that as we get into the word of the Lord today, the word will be taught and preached with clarity. It will bring balance and direction and it will lift your faith up to believe in the things of God. We believe that as you keep listening, the power of God will come upon you and meet your need. Dr. Jacob Saki has authored the following books, The Power of Covenant Blessings, The Power of Divine Increase, and The Power of Influence. The Power of Covenant Blessings has chapters on The Adamic Covenant, The Noahic Covenant, and The Abrahamic Covenant. The Power of Divine Increase explores themes on Vessels of Increase, Kinds of Vessels, and Dynamics of Increase. The Power of Influence discusses the currency of leadership, how to become a positive influence, man's influence over woman, and much more. These books are available on Amazon.com. Get a copy for yourself and a loved one. With knowledge through the Word of God, you are destined for change in your life. Welcome to the R of Solution. Information always produces transformation. Information produces transformation. Lack of information will keep a people in the dark. Information produces transformation. When you are informed, you are transformed. Hosea says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. God's people, not the people of the world. They are destroyed because of lack of information. <coughs> because of lack of information, many people can pray amiss. Many people can pray outside of what God's intents and purposes are for them. But when you gain information, you grow higher Amen. and you go higher. Amen. Blessed be God. Amen. 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 Today we're going to deal with a big word. <laughs> I call it a big, it's a big word, but not really a big word. It's called transgenerational mindset. Mm. Transgenerational mindset. Trans, like us in transfer, us in transact, us in transmission. <coughs> Transgenerational, meaning cutting across generation to others, breaking the limitation of one generation onto another one. For the most part of church folks, they have what we call a generational mindset. That is if they are very good church folks. <laughs> In fact, some people don't even have a mindset at all. <laughs> they just leave. <laughs> but when you become a, a personality of the kingdom, your mindset has to transcend the barrier of your generation. The reason why many leaders may never pass on a baton to someone is because they don't have a transgenerational mindset. They are only looking at their time. And so many people fizzle out, whereas they could have raised and read many a men and women after them. Because of lack of transgenerational mindset and many of our leaders we clamor for respect we clamor for honor we clamor for property i'm preaching we clamor for limelight and glory we don't want somebody else to stand in the limelight because we are generational minded it's about me myself and i 
We keep people in a box. And they will only be open on the day we leave the earth. And when we are a people like that, God cannot transcend. God cannot break the barrier that exists in the formation of our minds. And you are as healthy as your mind is. <laughs> are you ready for the word of the Lord? I am ready. You are very, you are as healthy as your mind is. A toxic mind cannot produce anything good in the body. No one can arrive at masteries when they have been impoverished in the mind. No one, no one can arrive at masteries, arrive in a high place when they have been made to think that they are the mefu bushet of their day. No one lives in Lodiba and stays in Lodiba with a Lodiba. It's a Lodiba is in the Bible city where Mefu the, the grandson of Saul, dwelt. No one ever lives there and think about sitting at the king's table. Except God is with you. <laughs> and so we are growing up. As a generational mindset people we are into what you you know back in the days we have something we used to call tunabu okay um, some of you will come around it soon <laughs> <laughs> and the tunabu was such that if you're not careful they said the dog could bite you <laughs> and tunabu faded and to people said that were in pencil hill your trouser had to be like a pencil and that generation also faded. And now Tunabu is coming back. <laughs> With bell buttons. <laughs> and green bling. <laughs> Jesus help our soul in our time. Hallelujah. The world said they found fashion. No, they are just circulating what other people have celebrated and thrown into the garbage. Mindset. Mindset. Today, if you don't wear a particular name brand... People think they haven't arrived. It's all mindset. And so you have to borrow money so that you can also have MK, Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, and the likes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. Mindset. Mindset. I mean, mindset. That's Greek. Mindset. We don't have a transgenerational mindset. God has spoken a word to us in Psalm 65 and verse number 11. Psalm 65, verse number 11. Sorry, girls, I'm going another route. Hallelujah. Those girls are very good. <laughs> Praise God. All the children in the house, they are excellent. Praise the Lord. Thou crownest a year with goodness, and thy part drop with fatness. You crown the year. God crowns the year. Is it possible that God can crown the year? God does. I remember, I remember telling you that God does not crown calendars. He crowns humans who live within current calendars. Is it possible at all that God can crown a year? And because of poor mindset, you won't imbibe what God is saying for the now. For me, I came from a poor family. Poverty is stuck to us like glue. That's be somebody saying. That's not my declaration anyway. Praise God. For me, for me, it's ever for me. As for me, we are like the people of the days of Joshua. As for me. And we are not transcending. We are not raising people to come higher than us. We want everybody to stay below us. So we may become the king and the chieftain. So others may continually look up to us. You are a failure if you cannot produce anybody after who is greater than you. That is a reason I'm, I have lifted the bar for our children. In the private, I tell them that they are great. In the private, I tell them that they can rise above me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Don't tell them that life is going to be hard. Oh, you see, your grandfather was a. When I was coming up, they told me your grandfather is a teacher. Even your own father became a teacher. 
teaching is in the family. My great, my uncle in Calabar, he's watching now. He was also a teacher at one point. Everyone in the family had an anointing of a teacher. No wonder I'm also, I like to teach the Bible. So, <laughs> if you only know my story. <laughs> I used to teach at age 18 and a half. I used to teach the nursery class. Then God favored me. And then I began teaching Bible knowledge and English in our school then. The church I was raised from. So teaching has been in my blood. And so as I preach, I stop to teach. So you are informed. Because information produces transformation. All right, let's go. Matthew chapter 17 and from verse number 2. Matthew 17 and verse number 2. If you don't change your mindset, you can have a great experience of the presence of God. And yet that will not change you at all. <laughs> the Bible says in Matthew 17 verse 2. And Jesus was transfigured before them. His face did shine as sun. And his raiment was as white as the light. Continue. And behold, there appeared unto them, said them. Yeah. That means Jesus was not alone. Moses and Elias or Elijah talking with them. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Peter, <laughs> Lord, it is good for us. For who? You have to come alive. It's good for us to be here. Remember that Jesus took only three. So now there are nine of them outside. Let's say eight. Because at this time Judas was completely, he had vacated his position. In heart and soon in the body. And so nine of them are down there. And yet Peter said, forget them. We are here now. Some people taste the power of God. And because of selfish mindset, that thing follows them. They don't want anybody at all to know they are church so that they too can be blessed. They don't want anybody at all to get connected to the man of God so they too can be blessed. And so they become people who shield instead of open the doorway of the, of the blessing that they are receiving. If you are that individual, you need to repent in this year. Your selfishness will not prevail. And Psalm 65, 11 also prevail in your heart. He says, that it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt let us make here three tabernacles. One for thee. One for Moses and one for Elijah. While he had spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Say them. Yeah. <laughs> and behold, a voice out of heaven, out of the cloud said, This is my beloved son. You see, because of selfishness, Peter was not authenticated. Jesus was. <laughs> This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear he him. Now go to Luke, because I want to show you Luke's assertion of this. Luke chapter 9, and from verse number 30. Luke 9 and from verse number 30. You're going to hear the Lucan uh, assertion or part or rendition of, it, of this. It says, and behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah. He appeared in glory and spoke of his disease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said to, the, to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he thus speak, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came out a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear he him. Praise God. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. Say alone. And they kept it close and told no man in those days of the things they had seen. If it were you, would you also say it? A cloud came, it swallowed all of you. And then at the end of the day, you find out that the cloud actually left you and stayed on Jesus alone and authenticated him. 
the Bible makes us understand here that these men, though being called by the Lord and has seen the Lord's Messiah transfigured before their faces, had a very poor mindset. They have seen the glory. They have seen the unmistakable presence of God. There is a glory that Moses saw. There is a glory the ancient prophet saw. And they saw it and they wanted it only for them and themselves. When you are a transgenerational person, a person who thinks transgenerational wise, you think about other people. You think about children born and yet unborn. You think about after your aspiration. What happens beyond? Praise God. You see, the celebrated prophet of Israel, Moses, one day had to be taken off the scene. And the saddest, to me, Joshua 1.1 1, 1 is one of the saddest scriptures ever written. For it says, after, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. The Lord spoke unto Joshua. You mean that God has no use for a dead man. God has no use for a dead man. God only is interested in the living because he's a living God. Mm. And the Bible says that God spoke to Joshua. God was looking beyond the parameters. Stay with me here. God was looking way beyond Moses. But the people were looking at Moses. They were a generational mindset locked down. Moses was their celebrity. Go talk to God. Come and tell us. What would they tell Joshua? Uh, Joshua was not a prophet like Moses. What would they tell Joshua? Go up the mountain. You talk. Transact with God on our behalf. Eh? Come back and tell us what he says. Will, he, will that uh, opportunity arise? No. And so they celebrated. The Bible says they mourned until God stepped in and told Joshua himself, I'm done with Moses. Now look at verse number two. It says, now arise. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, that all the people into the land that I'm going to give to them, even to the children of Israel. You see that Joshua himself has also gotten into the place of celebrating his master's death and demise and forgotten that the reason they came into the wilderness was to enter Canaan. The reason you're going to, through suffering is because there's glory ahead of you. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Just last, I think it was Friday, we were talking about the fact there's a lot of stuff going on. Disease, affliction, problem, accidents, people, and all that. So I, I, I broke it out and I said, because there's something good beyond it. The, 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 no suffering, no gain. Suffering will in, indeed produce glory. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if you have suffered a little while, you shall reign with him. It means suffering sometimes. Suffering is part of Christian, is part of Christianity. Oh. <laughs> if we taught suffering now, a lot of people's faces will change. But suffering is part of Christianity. You think that the master laid there, they were they ripped through his side and his 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 fingers, and you thought that was a joke. Let, let somebody prick you with it. I was watching a, a video clip of a of a man who was afraid of a small needle. They were going to inject him. He was afraid, he was crying. A man almost in his 50s, 60s, crying. He was, Small needle, what about a nail running through you? A spiritual experience does not change your mindset. Let me hone it down. Speaking in tongues does not change your mindset. Speaking in tongues is great. You build yourself in your whole most holy faith in you 20 by praying in the Holy Ghost. But praying in tongues alone does not alter the course of your mind. You alter the course of your mind by many few things that I will share here today. There is what I call a generational block where people are locked in into systems, systems of belief. Sometimes fear becomes prevalent in a particular dispensation until another dispensation arises where somebody triumphs away and say that we have to put fear away and then people change their mindset when you have a local mindset you cannot go international 
you become a local champion. <laughs> if you are singing now and you think that your song is going to be contained within this four arena here, it, 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 it does tell me that you're not thinking ahead. You see, as small as a needle is, someone had to invent it. A needle is far useful than creating nothing. By far, Africa has all the resources to develop the continent. But because of poor mindset, we are very beggarly. We are always looking for aid. <laughs> And the Bible says that the borrower would become subject to the lender. We have great engineers, but look at our roots. We raise doctors, but when our politicians are sick, they fly them outside. I'm preaching now. Poor mindset. We are not locked down, sister. Our colonial masters locked our minds down on a generational basis and the, the the sad part of it is that on a very hot day in an african soil you see a man put on three-piece suit <laughs> we call that a gentleman <laughs> he's sweating profusely <laughs> don't mind this preacher i wear you too but it better be cold the reason we were wearing suit was because it was cold weather here. But when it is hot, you don't expect me to appear in three pieces. No, I want to come in my African native attire. I'm a son of Africa. I love Africa. Praise God. Some of, some of you, when you come into this country after three years, you don't want anybody even to know that you are an African. We forgive you today in the Jesus' name. And heaven also forgive you in Jesus' name. You've changed your whole tonation. Nobody can tell where you are coming from. <laughs> hey. I know a relative who came here for less than two years. Still, she's still slanging. <laughs> mindset, oh, mindset. Slanging and living in poverty. I'll show you that God is a globalist. What do I mean? God thinks about the world. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the church. But see, the church people hate the people that are coming in from the world. Because they are not like them. They don't dress like them. They're not supposed to dress like you. They're not supposed to talk like you. But you have to receive them in the love and the grace of God. Just as God loved the world and gave his son a ransom. God is a globalist. God thinks about cities. He thinks about states. But God has the whole world on his heart. And if you want to qualify for Psalm 65 and verse 11. Where God will crown you this year. You better be a seeker of the kingdom. Matthew 6.33 And if you're a seeker of the kingdom. You begin to love the things that God loves. And one of the things that God loves is people. People are the highest commodity on the face of the earth. If you hate people, then it means you hate your own existence. Hmm. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell in it. The earth is God's. Glory be to God. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse number 14. Not only does the earth belong to him, the heavens also belong to him. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God 
the earth also with all that there is in it praise god it says with all that therein is it belongs to god it says the earth also so god endears himself to the world god endears himself to people populace praise god that's the reason that jesus came he came to die for the world so if you become a person who has a narrow vision a narrow mindset as for me i come from a particular country and as they are so am i you won't break the barrier i say you will not be able to break the barrier because you get on a lockdown system Sometimes when I travel and I'm coming, some of you call me, if, if I can bring Kobe. <laughs> well, since I'm putting on preaching, it means you shouldn't call me again on it. <laughs> what is Kobe? It's, like, it's rat poison. <laughs> no, it's not rat poison. Salted fish. To increase the quotient of your high blood pressure to the ceiling and the roof. We salt fish. Make sure it is first rotten. <laughs> Are you ready? Mm. Then after we swallow pills. So that the pressure... Bl <laughs> hey, Africa. May God help this generation. May God help this generation. My grandmother was diabetic, but she loved mangoes. And when she would eat mangoes, I'm not talking about two, I'm talking about buckets. But after she would take a pill, that's what took her out. <laughs> You're laughing. You've been eating turkey tails. Mindset. You left the homeland with that mindset. If you don't eat turkey tail, will you die? So a man told me, as for me, I, I can't stand salad at all. It's a white man's food. Do you think kontomri is a white man's food? That's what our fathers ate. And some of them, 100 and something. He said, but I've been eating it, and people are dying at 60 and 70. Did you go to the farm? Were you cutting firewood? Did you walk two, three miles? Amen, don't shut me down. If they invent a car, that would take you into your bed. You buy one. <laughs> Mindset. <laughs> Easy does it. But God is a globalist. God thinks beyond your beautiful country. God thinks beyond your small village. God goes beyond it. And God wants you to also go beyond it. Praise God. Because your papa and mama lived in a particular situation and locked themselves down in a particular situation does not mean you should become a statistic. It means you must rise above it in the name of the Lord. Mindset doesn't change because of geography. Because we clearly saw that even when supernatural things happen, it doesn't change the people's mindset. So you can live here in America and still have a very poor mindset. Mindset comes by indoctrinating your own mind. <laughs> teaching your mind putting your mind through a rigorous education dragging your mind as it were like in the market square with the word of God and saying I believe the report of God this is what God says and I'm going to abide by it my feelings may be contrary to it my eye gate may be seeing something else but I believe the report of the Lord it makes you look foolish but I'd rather be foolish and see the end than be wise in my own eye and come to a dead end. This has been the television broadcast series of the Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries. Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries, bringing salvation, healing and deliverance.
Jacob Saki has authored the following books. The Power of Covenant Blessings, The Power of Divine Increase, and The Power of Influence. The Power of Covenant Blessings has chapters on The Adamic Covenant, The Noahic Covenant, and The Abrahamic Covenant. The Power of Divine Increase explores themes on Vessels of Increase, Kinds of Vessels, and Dynamics of Increase. The Power of Influence discusses the currency of leadership, how to become a positive influence, man's influence over woman, and much more. These books are available on Amazon.com. Get a copy for yourself and a loved one. With knowledge through the Word of God, you are destined for change in your life. We're happy you listen to the broadcast and we want to give you an opportunity if you have not made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord as at yet. We believe that by receiving the person of Jesus into your life, your life will be made anew. The Bible tells us in John's Gospel that if we believe on him, he will give us the right or the power to become children of God. Your life will take a different turn, a better turn. Now simply pray after me, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. Forgive me of all my sins and wash me in your precious blood. I believe that Jesus Christ is a son of God and he came to die for my sins. Friends, if you pray that simple prayer under the basis and the authority of God's word, your spirit has been reborn. Find a Bible believing church that preaches and teaches the word of the Lord without any fear and grow in it. Or else, just come right by our, any of our services and you'll be greatly blessed. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.